Hi, we are Becky's classmates. And we are so excited to be here at Supumalelo High School. Um, we are expecting roughly 20 students um, and we are hosting an HIV workshop. Each of us will have um, a little bit of uh, a presentation in which we will be sharing some content. I hope you enjoy the video. just have to explain what is HIV. I know uh, generally everybody knows that HIV is something that kills people, but uh, in a true sense of it, the academically, uh, human, uh, HIV, first of all, it's human, that is, it's, it's, a, it's something that, uh, that attacks or infects human, human beings. And then immunodeficiency, uh, which means that it weaknesses the body's ability to fight uh, the, the diseases that, uh, that are coming to, to, to the body. Then the virus, we say it's a, it's a pathogen having the ability to replicate only inside a cell. Now a pathogen, it's a, it's a parasite that comes into the cell and reproduces that replicate itself so that then it expands. And then there's two differences between HIV and AIDS. HIV and AIDS. I hope you understand it. It begins with HIV, it ends with it which AIDS. What does AIDS mean? Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. That is what AIDS stands for. <laughs> Acquired is something that you get new. You see, it comes to you, it's new. Immune Deficiency, it still does, does the very same thing. It decreases or weaknesses in the bodies to fight all the, in, the illnesses. It means your immune, system, your immune system and everything, it cannot fight more any any infection that comes to you, then that ha how it weakens you. Syndrome, a group of signs and symptoms that occur together and characterize a particular abnormality. Hence, we are saying AIDS. Now, HIV and AIDS versus AIDS. HIV and AIDS is the virus that causes AIDS. It's not vice versa, it does not begin with AIDS, then HIV is the one that causes AIDS. You first contract HIV, then you end up having AIDS. Not everyone who is infected with HIV and AIDS has AIDS. I hope we understand and agree with it. It does not necessarily mean that you are HIV, but then automatically you've got AIDS. Everyone with AIDS is infected with HIV. Exactly the opposite of what I have said in, uh, in the first sentence. AIDS is as a result of a progression of HIV infection. Remember, you contract a, a, HIV and AIDS, and you, you, you ignore that, you, or you don't know, and then as time goes by, it ends up now having, you are ending up having an AIDS now instead of the HIV, but once you have an HIV and then you treat it, it's un unlikely that you can end up there. Anyone infected then with HIV can transmit the virus to another person. We all know that we have just gone into activity to say unprotected sex, uh, Okay, how is it then HIV transmitted? Let's go into that. Unprotected sexual contact with an infected. So before I explain, can, does anyone know how can HIV not be spread to another person? Just one or two. The group is very quiet at the back. <laughs> 
Okay, so example, if I touch Ramona, can I give her HIV? No. Exactly. So, basically, you can't get HIV by hugging, close mouth kissing with your partner, bathing together, sharing food, or even sweat, tears, or even using the same toilet. So how is HIV, or how can HIV be, be prevented? You need to use the ABC approach. Firstly, you need to abstain from sex. You need to be faithful to one partner and not have multiple partners, as you don't know how or how many partners the other per person has been sleeping with. Thirdly, you need to condomize. You need to educate yourself in terms of safe sex. Every time you have sex for intercourse, you need to use a condom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you agree? <laughs> you need to know your status as well as your partner's status. So when you go into a new relationship or even are in a relationship already, you always need to go for an HIV test. And also do not use needles together. And when you come in contact with blood, to avoid sores and cuts. You need to make use of gloves. Do you have first aid kit in your classrooms? Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that each classroom has a first aid kit. And also don't let your peers pressure you to engage in risky activities. You as a person has the right to say no. And if they don't respect your decision, they're not your friend at all. And then the symptoms of HIV and AIDS. So the early symptoms can be mild and easily dismissed. However, it is not as easy as it sounds. Although a person is not able to notice this type of symptoms, they can still infect another person with the HIV infection. listen to me. All the course that says don't follow my instructions, you don't listen to what I'm going to say. So the course that must follow my instructions, you are going to three people. Any three people in the classroom, you go into them, you're going to shake their hand. You shake their hand, you write their name on the card. Understand? Yes. You can proceed. Quick, quick, only three people, eh? And the three people? 
data for HIV and AIDS in South Africa. Of which um, 7.1 million people, there's 7.1 million people in South Africa living with HIV and AIDS. Of that, 18% is um, adult HIV prevalence. 270,000 of that is new infe HIV infections every year. Um, 110,000 is estimated for the AIDS-related deaths. 56% of the adults are on treatment, and 55% of the children are also on treatment. And then there's 86% of adults that are actually aware of their HIV status, of which 65% um, of them are on treatment, and 81% have a viral suppressed load. Now I'll be demonstrating, asking for demonstrators for their condom use. Um, I'll ask from that table. Yes. <laughs> Can I get a guy from that table? And a lady from this one. I'll hold you. <laughs> you must tell the class what you do when you get the condom. Guys, let's listen. Focus through what you're doing. Okay. First of all, hold the head. Then, hold the head. Okay, I'll talk you through the... Thank you. Okay, firstly, what he did wrong, he was supposed to have checked the expiry date on the condom, of which he didn't, but it's fine. And then, I call Clash, so they say there's no time for that. There's always time. And then you check. You do not use a condom that's brittled and sticky, or you can see that it's old. And you do not use a condom that has been stored in the light. And when you're opening the condom, you must firstly check the expiry date. You push the condom to the one side of the back, and then there's a space for you. The condom actually has a, the packaging actually has a part where you can tear it off easily. Instructions on condoms and where it goes and how it's inserted, and I trust you guys will actually use that information that was given to you. So let's look at some legal aspects around HIV, an infected HIV AIDS person. Okay, so firstly, an HIV AIDS person is not treated differently than someone that is not HIV AIDS infected. Okay, the, the, the legal aspect is the same. So if we look at human dignity, what does this mean? It means that any person's dignity cannot be damaged or insulted in any way by anybody in their actions or their words. Okay, if we look at education, uh, for infected person has the same rights to education as a person that doesn't have AIDS. Okay? Yes. When we look at medical treatment, you, an infected person, has, has to make his own decisions when it comes to medical treatment. No one else can make that decision. Mm -hmm. It's the same like with a doctor in the hospital, they cannot refuse a person emergency care. Neither can they um, 
force you to have an HIV AIDS test. Okay? If you look at privacy, everybody has the right to confidential information. Okay? Uh, for an infected person, they don't need to provide that uh, the HIV status to anyone. That's their um, whether they want to produce that information to whether it be a prospective employee or a hospital, even or even to a doctor. And the doctor cannot um, divulge a person's HIV status to anybody else. Okay? When we look at pregnancy, pregnancy is the same as medical treatment. They have the right to decide whether they want to terminate the pregnancy if they are HIV AIDS positive. Okay? When we look at work, an employee or an individual that is HIV positive, they have the right to choose what kind of work they want to do. So whether it's someone that wants to be a healthcare worker, they've got that right to actually become a healthcare worker. No one can tell them not to become a healthcare worker. Okay? If we look at housing, a person that is HIV positive has the same rights to us, whereby they have access, for access to housing. Okay? Meaning that they are not allowed to be turned away for a home loan for a house or a subsidy. Okay? If we look at social grant also, anybody that is HIV AIDS uh, positive is entitled to a disability grant because they can't support, they're too ill to support themselves and their families. Okay, then we look at freedom of expression. Freedom of expression means that they, because they're HIV AIDS positive, they have more insight to provide information and ideas around AIDS because they have first hand experience. So that, that right is actually very important for, say for instance, if I was HIV AIDS positive, and I'm here today presenting to you guys awareness around the disease, I'm more than capable of doing that because I'm in the situation. I can tell you exactly what the symptoms are, uh, the causes. The Hi everyone, I'm Dorian, and I will be talking to you about testing and counseling, and then later on treatment. But firstly, I want to share a joke with you because can ask them, I'm always the jokey one in the group telling random jokes. You might find it funny, you might not, so let's see. This lady's name was Portia. She was a chef at the restaurant. And a boss comes up to her one day and says, Portia, um, we need to do HIV tests because our policies and regulations has been amended as such. And she replies and says, yes sir, we can do this test. I'm all for this test, I can guarantee you I can pass this test. But only one thing that is required from you is that you give me time off to study for this test. <laughs> okay, so. Sorry. So, um, as Portia didn't know what HIV testing is all about, you find that there are actual people that are not well informed about how to do a HIV test even. So firstly, before you do the test, you need counselling. Um, why counselling? It is to improve the patient's understanding and the management of the disease. It is to improve the medication adherence behavior and to improve therapeutic outcomes. It is to improve or adapt um, a healthy lifestyle and to improve the quality of life. So areas to counsel are before you do the test, which is known as the pre-test, and then after you do the test, which is known as the post-test, and then um, crisis and adherence counseling. So moving on to the pre-test. Um, this is a test um, the patients get or the counseling patients get before doing the test, or who are willing to do the test, meaning that you give your consent to do the test. And then the counselors will always try and make the patient feel comfortable, firstly. And um, this is normally done by nurses, psychologists, or um, qualified counselors, <coughs> which ensures that the patient has enough information about the disease so that they can make informed decisions whether to do the test or not. Okay, so we're going to talk about 
up the link between um, HIV and pregnancy. Now, I have never been pregnant, but from what I understand from my peers and my family who has been pregnant, is that it's quite a traumatic thing that a woman goes through for the first time, maybe even the second or the third time, because your body is going through all of these changes. But now imagine that trauma, and then this person finds out that they're HIV positive. It just takes a whole nother form, and they become a lot more stressed out. Um, so it is important for the woman to, to try and get into a better, healthier, um, positive mindset. In terms of pregnancy and HIV, there's been no scientific proof that it um, increases or progresses HIV. However, if a woman has a more progressive form of HIV, what pregnancy can do is progress it um, quicker to get to AIDS. So like Samaba mentioned, um, HIV and AIDS is different. The lady who is pregnant, her hormones and stuff can make her um, infection of HIV progress more quickly to um, AIDS. It doesn't seriously affect um, pregnancy, it doesn't seriously affect the baby. However, there have been cases in other African countries where um, they, they said HIV may um, lead to kids being disabled or it may lead to stillbirth. So I don't know if you know what stillbirth is. That is when the baby dies inside and um, in giving birth, the baby is dead. So it is quite unfortunate. Um, and then also infections. Um, like one of my, my colleagues said, um, when a lady has got HIV, um, then it may lead to preg uh, infections during pregnancy. Okay. Um, it is important for a woman to know what her HIV status is so that she can get the necessary um, treatment. So she can um, you know, get the necessary treatment in terms of medical treatment or counseling like um, Dottie Ann mentioned. Also she can let her partner know because um, he may be infected and he may not know. So it's that conversation as well. And then counseling which is also important um, like Dottie Ann mentioned for this person to get counseling in order to work through these difficulties. Because now, like I said, they're dealing with pregnancy, which is a whole trauma on its own, and they're dealing with HIV, which is a huge trauma um, coupled with that. They can also um, get your AR, um, ARV, so your antiretroviral uh, therapy, which um, was discussed already. So they can get the necessary medical treatment um, if they know their status upfront. Um, <coughs> It talks there about care during pregnancy and childbirth. This really uh, talks about um, a lady, you know, being aware of what is necessary for her body in terms of health. So having a good diet, making sure that she's um, taking the right treatment and taking her vitamins and those kind of things. And then childbirth and labor. Um, during childbirth, a mother can or they, they, she may transmit the infection during childbirth. Um, roughly 30% of women who are HIV positive can transmit the disease to the unborn child. Um, women who decide to do a cesarean, so that is when they cut open, your, cut open your stomach and they take the baby out, it's less traumatic than that, but they, um, women who decide to have a C-section. Good afternoon students, my name is Samantha Toby and today I will be speaking about gender-based violence. Can any one of you tell me what gender-based violence is? J, roughly, anything, one word or phrase, or let's continue. No one wants to give a try? The table has a talk. Okay, thank you, that is correct. And the slide, as it says, what gender-based is a physical or a sexual or a psychological abuse. Mostly gender abuse is um, done in women and female ladies. So today I'm actually going to show you the linkages of um, gender-based violence and linking with HIV and AIDS. Okay, HIV normally affects like women and young girls who are you today, 15 to 25 years old, and because of cultural. When I mean cultural, it's because all those ladies that are forced to get married when they're young, especially in the, the rural areas, 
whereby men, you know, they're dominant, they're powerful, they are forced. So culture intertwines and actually um, affects it in this way. And the other way will also be social. Social meaning all the social pressures that is happening outside, whereby we want to look nice, you know, ladies, by being having a blesser, we all know that term, <laughs> having a guy or dating someone that is much older than you. And the other one will be also economic status in society. That would be maybe abuse more um, suitable to us maybe in the workplace where now women wants to get, you know, they want to be recognized in the level where men is recognized. They're having the share, you know, an equal pay or when a woman wants to get a certain higher position and they have to maybe sleep with somebody else, you know, a man who is in a more, you know, executive level in order to get that certain position or post. Okay, we will move to the types of gender-based violence and the intersections, as I say, linkages with HIV and AIDS. This more happens into a, an immediate partner violence with HIV. Your intimate partner, someone that does not, that you are intimate with, your boyfriend or your partner, and that person doesn't protect you in a certain way, and they have so many sexual, you know, trans, uh, sexual partners that you guys now having um, to have HIV and AIDS. The other one would be also cultural and social norms that I've actually said. More especially, it will be um, gender-based in such a way that your culture, having an older guy and who has multiple, you know, ladies or they, you know. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for your time. Uh, we understand the weather, it's rainy outside, uh, but you decided to come and attend to us. We thank you very much for participating and for, lis for listening to us and for having us here. Thank you very much. Uh, now, before we close, now it is that time now that we issue some certificate, particularly to those that have been successful in partaking. Uh, sir, can you come forward so that then you receive your... <laughs>